Hello, I'm Dan from HRV Rentals and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at our brand new 2024 Four Chateau Model 31W. Uh, today, just like always, I'll be giving you the full walkthrough, the outside, and then the inside, so you'll be all set and prepared when renting from us. The length for this RV will be 32 feet and 4 inches, and we like to say the height is 12 and a half feet, so keep that number in mind, 12 and a half, for things like parking garages, drive throughs and tunnels. We're going to start off on the driver's side, starting with our first compartment. This is our generator. The generator is a substitute for when you're not plugged in to your campsite. That's called shore power. So if you're not plugged in, you're going to be using your generator to power all your major electrical appliances. That'll be your AC unit on the roof, your microwave, your TVs, as well as all of your power outlets behind the front cab. The generator will run on engine gas, so as long as you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. The only reason you'd have to come out here is if you accidentally run the AC and the microwave at the same time. That's a little bit too powerful for the generator and it might cause it a trip. So in case that happens, all you want to do is just take this top off by turning these latches. From there you have your breaker right here. So this little uh, lever, this will flip backwards. All you want to do is flip this towards you. Apart from that, everything else for the generator is handled inside. Next to our generator, we have our first storage compartment. And in our next larger storage compartment, this is where we've placed all of the hoses and cords that we'll give you during your rental. In our first bag, we have our sewer hose. I'll show you this later when we dump out our waste tanks. In the second bag, we have a few other things. We have this white hose here. This is our Freshen City water hose. I'll show you where to hook that up as well as how the water system works. We also have this black wire. This is our TV cable. I'll show you where to hook that up. And lastly, we have our 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. So you can plug this onto the end of your power cord. I'll show you that later. But once you're plugged in at your campsite, um, the 15 amp, um, everything inside should be working except for your AC unit. That's a little bit too powerful. But I'll go over the electrical once I get to the power cord. Above that, we have our hot water exhaust as well as our furnace exhaust. So of course, expect them to be hot and don't put your hand there. Here is our city water connection. So this inlet will be using that white hose I showed you. You're just gonna hook it up in here. The city water will be for when you're at your campsite or wherever else you have a pump. You wanna take their water from their pump instead of from your own tank. So when you plug into city water, this will bypass your own tank and it'll go straight into your pipes. Moving on, we have our outside shower. This is just a little faucet here in case you want to wash off dirt or sand before you head inside the RV. Next up, we have our dumping station. So this will be how we dump our gray and black waste tanks. All I've done is take the sewer hose that we'll give you and we just hooked it up to this outlet right here. And then you can stick the other end with your elbow uh, into the sewage or wherever else uh, you're dumping. From there, we have two color-coded valves. We have our black valve for our black tank, that's our toilet waste water. And then we have our gray valve for our gray tank, that's our sink and shower waste water. Right now they're pulled out, which means they're open. So if there were anything in the tanks, they'd be coming out right now due to gravity. We recommend you open up the black one first, and then the gray one to kind of flush out your hose. Inside there's a control panel that will tell you the levels of these tanks. So once they say they're empty, you can just push them back in to close them, unscrew your hose, and you're all good to go. You may also note we have a flush valve here. You won't have to worry about this, it just helps us sanitize the tanks for the next customer. And for the last storage compartment on the driver's side, we have our power cord. So this RV takes 30 amp service. So whatever your campsite you're going to, you wanna make sure that you have 30 amp service. That'll be these uh, three prongs here. Once you're plugged in, all of the major electrical appliances inside will be working. So again, that'll be your AC unit, your microwave, your TVs, and all of your power outlets behind the front cab. So in other words, you won't have to worry about your generator when you're plugged in. And yes, you can run the, gener uh, the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're plugged in. This power cord will be plugged into this little power cord connector over here. And then of course you're going to stick the other end at the post in your campsite. And right above that we have our TV cable inlet. So if you remember that small black wire I showed you, you can just hook it up in here um, to get local channels. If you don't, you can also use your antenna to find channels through the air. Now onto the back of the RV, there are just a couple things to note. We have our rear view camera, I'll talk more about that inside. And then we have our ladder that goes up to the roof. It's just for service purposes, so please don't go up there. And now onto the passenger side, starting off with our biggest storage area. This big. 
Moving along, we have our freshwater inlet, which is sort of the counterpart to the city water inlet I showed you before. You're going to use the same white hose. However, this will be for uh, to fill up your tank itself. So if you're out on the road or you're camping without any sort of hookup, you're gonna take your water off of your tank, of course, and this will be how you fill it up. Below that, we have our fuel inlet. So this tank will be 55 gallons and it is 87 gas, so no premium or diesel. Uh, and then once you're done, just make sure that it clicks just like that. Below that, we have a propane outlet. So if you have an external grill at your campsite or anything else that uses propane, you can hook it up here and then it'll take it off of your propane tank on this RV. I'll get to that later. Next to that, we have another storage compartment. We have some uh, outside power outlets. You just wanna make sure that you're plugged into your campsite or your generator is running for these to work. Next to that, we have our propane tank. So this tank should last you a good week or so before you'll have to refill it. If you do have to refill it, truck stations and campsites, they will do that for you. The propane will be for things like your fridge when you're not plugged in at a campsite your stove, your hot water, and your furnace. So you can leave it on since your fridge runs on it during your rental. We have one more storage compartment here near the front of the passenger side. And lastly, we have an outside TV. So that's it for the outside portion of this walkthrough. We can head inside here, just like that. And you'll know that we have a detachable screen door here as well. At the entrance, we have a few things I'm going to go over. So starting off with our fire extinguisher for safety purposes, uh, we also have our smoke detector and carbon monoxide and propane detector inside the RV. To my left here, we have a few different switches, so I'll go over each of these. Starting off with our awning. So this is going to run on the house battery, which I'll get to later. But all you have to do is just hold down, extend, and retract to bring in and out the awning. This will go out about eight feet total, and it's only for shade. So if it gets windy or rainy, we suggest you bring it back in immediately. In order for the awning to work, you want to make sure that your keys are out of the engine and the parking brake is on. Next to that, we have awning light. This is our LED strip for the awning outside. Next one here is the step light. This is a little light underneath the steps here. You'll see that at nighttime so you don't trip. Moving along, we have an unnamed switch here. This is the entry galley lights here for the ceiling. And we have one more step light. We have uh, one on the inside here, and then there's also one right over here. Over here is the dial for the house battery, so you can just turn it off and on just by turning this clockwise and counterclockwise. The house battery itself is actually underneath these steps right here. It's for very minor electrical things like your lights, awning, slide out, even water pump. So it'll be charged in a lot of different ways. So if your engine's running, if you're plugged into your campsite, even if your generator's running, it'll all charge the house battery. So you really don't have to touch this. It won't jot a die or drain out on you unless you plan on walking away from your RV for several days at a time. Next up here at the entrance, we have the most important part of the inside. We have our control panel. So this will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about the inside and outside of your RV. Starting off with the corner over here, we have the levels of all of the tanks. So as I push down on each of these buttons, these will light it from empty to full. So LPG is our propane. I'll just push that down. You can see that goes up to full. We have our battery. That's our house battery, which I was just talking about. You can see that's two thirds charged. Our fresh is our fresh water. Our tank is one third full. Black is our toilet water, our black tank that's empty, and then our gray tank is our sink and shower water that is also empty. Next up we have our water pump switch. So if I switch this on, you'll see this little red light turns on. This is a pump that will help us draw water from our fresh water tank. Uh, that also means if you want to, you, if you're plugged into your campsite, to city fixtures, you want to have the water pump switch off since you're using their pump and taking their water instead of from your own tank. In other words, you want to have the switch on if you are not plugged into city water and you want to use something that uses water, so your sink, shower, or toilet. Next that, we have our switches for the tank heaters. You want to have these on if you plan on going to a place where it will be below freezing. So switching these on will prevent your waste tanks from freezing over. This big switch here is for our slide out, so you can extend it and retract it just like the awning. The slide out is already fully out for you. It goes along the entire driver's side. So this is the biggest your RV will get inside. Unlike the awning, you actually want to have your keys in the ignition and the engine running, as well as have your parking brake on to use the slide out. Above that, we have our generator. So this number here will tell you the total number of hours the generator has been running ever since it was manufactured. So you can see it says 4.3 hours there. We ask that you have the generator on for no more than three hours at a time and then have it off for about two to three hours just to prevent it from overheating. To start the generator, you're actually going to hold down stop first just to prime it for a few seconds. You'll see this red light turns on for generator. Then you can hold it down for a few seconds to start it. 
and here you can tell the generator's on. You're gonna wait about a few more seconds. When you hear the microwave beep, that means everything inside will be working. With the generator on, I can show you our thermostat here since it uses the AC. So this here will, of course, change your temperature. Down here, it's set to off. I'm just gonna switch it once over to the left to see fan. And now you can hear the fan turns on. Once more to the left is cool, that's our actual AC, instead of just the fan. And then lastly, if I switch it all the way over to the right here to heat, this is our furnace, it'll use a bit of your propane and a bit of your house battery to heat up your RV, so you don't need the generator for this. Next to that, this switch here will just be to adjust the fan speed. Also with the generator on, I can show you how to find channels on your TV. So once you're over here, I'm just gonna go right over to this uh, settings icon, head down to live TV, I'm just going to press that, and then we can press channel scan, next, and then it'll just take a few minutes to find channels for you. In this cabinet here, we have our uh, ability to change between antenna and cable. So right now you can see that green light is on with this button, so that means we're using the antenna right now. If I push it in, the green light will turn off, and now we can use a cable instead. To turn the generator off, you're just going to hold down stop for a few seconds. We'll continue on to the back of the RV with our master bedroom. So we have a big bed here, we have some storage up and over, a little skylight here as well. We have a little wardrobe in here so you can hang your clothes, there's a pole in here. We have a TV separate for our own bedroom, and we have a little uh, accordion door as a privacy. Below the bed we have our combined fuse box and circuit breaker box. We'll provide you with some extra fuses during your rental and I'll show you that later. This floor plan has a lot more storage on the inside, so we have more drawers over here and another wardrobe. On the passenger side to my left, we have our bathroom here. Starting off with our toilet here, it's kind of like an airplane toilet. You're just going to push down on this pedal to flush it down. You just want to make sure that your water pump is on, of course, or you're plugged into city water for this to work. Toilet paper is also RV specific, so you want to go to the camping section at Walmart, or campsites will also sell this kind of RV marine dissolvable toilet paper. During your rental, we'll also provide you with some bottles of solution, so you can just pour this down the toilet in case the smell ever comes up from the black tank, just to refreshen it up a bit. Apart from that, we have a standard shower and sink. Also in the bathroom, we have our settings for the water heater, so this will turn up and down the temperature. I'm just going to press this and this display will turn on, this will be the temperature for your water. Uh, you only want to have this on if you plan on using hot water since it will be draining your propane. Uh, so it will also take up to 10-15 minutes to heat up your water, so just plan in advance uh, and then use it only when you need it. Moving forward through the cabin, we have our kitchen area next. I'm going to start off to my left here with the refrigerator. The fridge will run on propane when you're not plugged in like we are right now. But when you do plug in the shore power at your campsite, it will automatically switch over to electricity. So no matter what, your fridge will stay on the entire time. On the opposite side, we have our house microwave. Again, just remember not to run the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're on your generator. Below that, we have a combined electric and propane stove. So here are our settings for the electric part. And for the propane part, you just set it to this little spark icon, and there you go. We also have a little charging station in the kitchen, so you just push down on that and then you can pull it up. We have power outlets, USB, USB-C, and then to bring it back down, you just push on this red button here. Apart from that, we have a standard kitchen sink with a little bit of cover for some extra counter space, and we also have some uh, LED lights along the bottom here. And moving further forward, we have our living area with our sofa and dinette. Both of these will turn into beds, and I'll show you that. To operate these windows, you're going to turn this little crank clockwise to open it up and then counterclockwise to close it. As for the blinds, they're just plug on them once and then tug on them again. You'll note that the sofa has two seat belts here and to turn it into a bed is very simple. You just pull it up and out like a futon. Along with these cup holders, the Dyna also has a wireless charging station, so you can just put your phone here. You also have uh, a USB and USB-C port here as well. We have two more seat belts for the dinette here. To turn it into a bed, it's very simple. You're just going to start by removing the cushions. Once these cushions are out of the way, we have a little latch underneath the dinette table. When it's flipped to the right, that means it's locked, so it won't be moving. I'm going to flip it to the left here, 
to unlock it and then we can push it down here onto these ledges. And then you're going to put these cushions in this format and here is our bed. You'll also note that we have an anchor for our child seat here. This here is our overhead bunk. So this cushion here is removable. All you're going to do is just stow it away up top here and then when you need to use it, you just pull it out onto these ledges here. Uh, we also have this little safety net you can uh, buckle up to the ceiling here. And then this little metal part is our ladder. So you can just hook it up to here for easy access. We have a privacy curtain that will go across the front here as well. And then we have another privacy curtain that will be velcroed onto the front cab here to separate it at night. During your rental, we'll also give you this little envelope here. This will give you a lot of useful stuff, starting with a little QR code. Uh, you can scan this for a online guide slash FAQ. This should answer most of the questions you have during your rental. If not, we also have a 24-7 roadside assistance number you can call via CoachNet. You're just going to provide these guys with your reservation code so they know what make and model they ha uh, you have so they can better serve you. We also have those extra fuses for the fuse box I was talking about earlier, so just in case anything blows. And then we also have our registration in this envelope as well. Now here we are in the front cab. I'll start off by showing you these keys. We have our ignition here, of course, for the engine. This purple key here will be for the cabin door to enter it from the passenger side. And then we also have this gray key here. This is for the outside storage compartments. We also have our contact information on the keychain here, so you can give us a call if you have any questions about your rental itself. On our center console here, it's pretty much like a regular car, truck with the AC and all that. But for the front display, we have our radio here. We can connect our phone with Bluetooth or Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you swipe to the left here, we have our camera. So I can just tap this. This is our rear view camera. You can keep this on when you're driving. Otherwise, when you put the RV in reverse, it will also pop up on the display. Also, if I turn on my blinker here, this is our right camera on our right mirror and then our left camera for our left mirror. We have our parking brake over here. You're just gonna push it down with your left foot here to engage it. And we have our handle here to release it. By the way, during the video, we've hidden a small photo of our dog mascot, Larry, somewhere inside the RV. So if you can find him, you can give us a comment down below. Uh, let us know where he is, but only the first person can receive a 10% discount on their rental. And that concludes our walkthrough for our 2024 Thor Chateau 31W. I'm Dan from HRV Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.